Okay, so I'm just gonna share my screen, guys, and it will show you a presentation on uh, what we're gonna discuss today, and that is the current state of whiskey cask investing and how returns stack up against traditional stocks, okay? So I am about to share this now. I hope you can all see that and let's get started. Okay, so good afternoon everyone and welcome to our webinar discussing the current state of whiskey investment and how returns stack up against traditional asset classes. My name is Neil Brown and I am one of the managing directors here at Bayburn Whiskey and today I'll be taking you through this presentation, hopefully giving you a better insight into whiskey cask investing and how the market has been affected this year. At the end of this webinar, if anyone has any questions, I would love to answer them. So, a little introduction on Brayburn Whiskey. We have been operating now since 2016, and we are actually youngest in the group of our larger company. We are valued partners with Decanter Whiskey in Japan, with Cask 88 in Edinburgh, and also Whiskey Foundation, who are a massive independent bottler. We're a very global brand now with offices in Perth, Scotland, Barcelona, Spain, and also Singapore and Asia. We are very lucky to say that we now have our very own bonded private warehouse in Speyside, where our clients can come and see their casks, and they can also experience all the great things that whiskey brings, as well as investments. We are the founders of the world's first ever whiskey cask index, the BC20. Currently, Brayburn Whiskey have over £20.3 million pounds worth of assets under our management, and it's safe to say we're the market leader for cask investment. So, what is whiskey investment? So, whiskey cask investment is buying a cask or a portfolio of casks of single malt scotch whiskey for investment purposes. You would be benefiting from natural growth year on year in a safe, secure market. We build diverse portfolios of whiskey from all over Scotland with complete portfolio management from the moment of entrance to the moment of exit, completing that full investment journey. Now, as you can see from this graph on your screen, most bottles of whiskey or most casts of whiskey are bottled before year 15. And you can clearly see by the graph the, the, the value of whiskey substantially grown in value past that age. We, on a regular basis, have six figure casks being sold to the next buyer on a regular, very regular basis for our clients. But what we all need to remember is that every single barrel of whiskey in Scotland that has been sold for these prices has all started its life in the zero to 10,000 pounds category. Our investors have benefited from an average annual capital growth of 13.09% per annum. With top, top distilleries returning much, much more. The key takeaway from this section is patience is key. Whiskey, whiskey takes time to mature, and with maturity comes wealth. Okay, so bottles versus casks. Obviously, two very similar aspects of whiskey, but investment-wise, they stack up very, very different. We are very proud to say that we've got a piece or we're part of that journey of a cask going through the cask investment angles, and one day it will be bottled, and every member of staff at Brayburn is very, very happy to say that we will be on that journey. But bottles are very much subject to demand, okay? So I'm sure you have all seen the astronomical prices at auction recently. This completely props up the bottle market, and we can see some spectacular prices. Last month, in fact, a Macallan 1926 sold for $1.9 million. That works out as $42,000 for one drink. Truly phenomenal. But as we can see from the slides on your screen, whiskey as a luxury asset well and truly trumps every single asset class in that category. Over the last 10 years, rare whiskey has appreciated by 563%. 
Now, these stats are taken by the top 100 bottles. Bottles are sold to auction in the last decade. Okay? But from these 100 bottles, which is quite interesting to realize, 22 of those bottles have actually went down in value. Now, if we compare this to the BC20 index, which tracks the top 20 casks that Braeburn Whiskey and Casky Tate sold over the last five years, we have not had one single cask of whiskey go down in value. This is due to the naturally appreciating element of cask growth. Because casks appreciate in a completely different manner from bottles. The liquid will continue to mature in the cask and year on year generate more value, consistently generating average returns of that magic number of 13.09% per annum. Now, as opposed to bottles, every single cask of whiskey must remain in government bonds. These are called duty-free government bonded warehouses until they are bottled. This offers our clients and investors complete security and accountability with their investment. The key takeaway from this with cask versus both bottles is security and growth. Casks are held in government bonds and will consistently rise in, rise in value. You are purchasing maturing stock. Okay. A very popular question we asked on a daily basis is why do distilleries actually sell the casks and how does this benefit the whiskey industry? Well, there are a number of reasons why distilleries will release their casks to the general public or to supply chains and independent bottlers. First of all, cash flow. We all know that whiskey takes a long time to mature, and while those casks are through that long-winded process of making that magic happen within the barrel, they need to release capital. So selling casks to independent bottlers and to supply chains releases initial capital while they play the waiting game with the rest of their casks. Selling casks to clients worldwide for investment purposes also raises brand awareness for that brand. If you have clients in Hong Kong, clients in New York buying casks of whiskey, you're automatically getting brand exposure in two big markets. Now, we at Brabham predominantly sell to investors who are looking to make money from buying single malt scotch, but we also sell to independent bottlers. And with independent bottlers buying these casks, they release some fantastic special releases, which also raises a brand awareness for that uh, distillery. So, we are very proud to say at Brayburn Whiskey that we've access to some of the best stock in Scotland, from Macallan to Lafroy, Beaumont, Springbank, and many, many more. So to give you all a current market insight and in how whiskey investment will actually benefit your portfolio and how it actually stocks up to modern day assets, I'm going to show you a slide on how whiskey has performed historically. Now, tangible assets are widely regarded as a safe haven against economic uncertainty. And a comparison of stocks supports the view that tangible assets have been more stable than stocks during the current economic climate. However, whiskey also comes out favorably when compared to other tangible assets, like, as seen in this graph, gold and Bitcoin. The FTSE 100, for example, which we can see here on the graph, we, from some figures from this morning, have, is actually down 13%. Now, last week, with the elections going on and current market uncertainty, we did see the FTSE drop as low as 20%. So stock markets are very much subject to what's happening in the world, what, who's releasing what tweets, or whatever we can see going on in the world will evidently affect stock. Bitcoin, the most controversial and talked about investment in the last 10 years, is an emotional roller coaster for clients. It literally looks like a roller coaster on this graph. It's up and down. And after the year of two years investing in Bitcoin, it's the same amount of time of whiskey, you can clearly see that whiskey outperforms all of the current projections. Now, what's most interesting for you to see from this chart is a comparison to gold. Gold has always been a constant safe bet for market volatility, but it's now underperforming behind whiskey. If an investor had invested $100,000 in July 2018 into whiskey casks, 
the S&P 500, Bitcoin and gold, the projected value of the portfolio would be highest if they invested into casks, followed by gold, Bitcoin, and lastly, the S&P. So you can clearly see that right now, the investment potential and what whiskey is actually doing will form a formidable, formidable part of your portfolio. So the state of the whiskey industry is something we get asked on a regular basis. What is the, the, the global situation of COVID, of US trade tariffs, of Brexit? What is that doing for cask investing? Now, I'm not going to hide away from the fact that 2020 has been one of the most challenging years in modern history. COVID has been detrimental to the whiskey industry. Distilleries have ceased production. Distilleries were struggling beforehand with output. So 2020 has definitely affected output even more. Visitor centres across Scotland are now closed for business, which is also a loss of income. And staff were or are on furlough. Travel and tourism has been completely affected with travel bans, quarantines in place, and people aren't coming to Scotland to see their casks and visit distilleries. With bars being closed, people aren't drinking in bars anymore, so it all seems that 2020, whiskey sense and consumption sense and supply and demand hasn't been a great year. Now, tariffs from Trump's outgoing regime have affected exports for 25% tax applied to single malt scotch coming into America. Even with his Scottish roots, he still persisted with his extreme tariff. Now, as for Brexit, I'm pretty sure this is the same with everyone's industry or uh, mode of work on this chat, but we just don't know where we stand with Brexit. It's probably the last thing in people's minds after a very turbulent 2020, but as of now, we just don't know what's gonna happen. But what does this actually mean for our investors? COVID in 2021 is already looking more positive. A vaccine has just recently been developed and we're looking like it's going to start being in uh, complete circulation. But regardless if COVID still affects facilities and still persists to cause havoc, having a cask in a government bonded facility for a medium to long term investment will outperform this pandemic and ignore the noise of what's happening in the world. With a new president and party in charge, we could see new tariffs in place or reduced tariffs in place, but the whiskey market is worldwide. And we have massive markets in Asia and Europe, so tariffs do not affect our investors as our market is not predominantly America. If anything, our biggest markets are spread across Asia and across Europe for the private gas market. Now, Brexit, it is very uncertain, but we just don't know. But what we do know is that whiskey is loved by consumers all over the world. It's consumed globally, exported around the globe, and is worth over five billion pounds to the UK, forward slash Scottish economy, okay? So it's clear to say and safe to say that whiskey is gonna survive and thrive. Now, people are drinking more and more whiskey, especially during lockdown, especially during this pandemic. Sales of whiskey in 2021 have actually grown, putting a pressure on supply and demand. So owning a cask of whiskey in this current market, if anything, is benefiting our investors. But what we all need to remember is, whiskey's been around for more than 200 years and been in production for a lot longer. We have survived world wars, we've survived global pandemics, market crashes, and even prohibition. So the key takeaway for our investors today is whiskey casks remain in government bond until bottled. We predict by the time you go to sell your cask, it will outperform global events and market volatility. Whiskey ignores the noise, okay? Now, the 2020 whiskey industry for Brabon has been very, very positive. We have seen, we have seen our best stretch of business in inception. We are selling on average 100 casks per month. And this is every single day clients are actually coming to us to offer diversification. They want to see the returns that whiskey actually offers and they actually understand the power of holding tangible assets in an inflation-based world. So right now, as of in all the volatility and the market uncertainty and what COVID has actually brought, 
we have seen the best spike in business since the company's inception. Now, Brayburn are actually expanding all over Scotland with offices predicted in uh, Glasgow early next year. We're going to expand in Singapore and we've got our very own bonded warehouse in Speyside. So even though we've had all this volatility, Brayburn has gone from strength to strength. But not just Brayburn. With not, not just with Brayburn, we see expansion clear all over Scotland. We've got Diageo building visitor to centres in Isla. We've got expansion of whisky shops all over uh, Edinburgh and Glasgow. We can see new, every single day I get Google alerts of this new distillery being formed in Edinburgh. Uh, the, the Dalmo group open new distilleries. It's clear to see that this little blip on the whisky market is going to go from strength to strength. Okay. And just to give you, you must all be wondering after that kind of speech, how do you actually invest into a whiskey cask? So if you can all see your screen here, whiskey cask investing is a simple, simple four stage process. We first take you through the selection process. Our team will select you a cask or a number of casks tailored to your objectives. Long term investment, short term investment. Do you have £10,000 to invest, £50,000 to invest? We will give you expert, expert portfolio management to find the best cask or cask for you. You then will acquire that cask through the acquisition stage and finalise the purchase of your cask. You'll receive certificates, online login details, and also a welcome pack that shows you the full legal owner of that cask. Your cask will then be sold in government bond in our very own government bonded warehouse and I urge all of my clients to come and visit their cask, touch their cask, and drink from that cask while it's maturing at that magic 13% on average every single year. And the most important part of Brayburn, and obviously part of your investment journey, is Brayburn Whiskey monetizing your investment. We complete the circle by selling your cask back to the market, and you receive the tax-free money into your bank account. Okay? Now... What I would like to do now, thank you for your time today, and what I would like to do now is after this call, you will be sent our very first BC20 index. Please read that front to back, back to front, and understand the power that whiskey actually holds and how this can form part of your portfolio. What we're also going to do is send you across a cask offer with projected returns, distillery background, and I'm looking forward to from every single person to be in touch and start your whiskey journey today. Thank you very much for listening. What I would like to do now is take some questions and put my video back on. Give me two seconds. Okay, so I have, I'm gonna look at my phone here guys, so apologies for looking down, but I have a question from Craig who has Ask the relationship between Brayburn and Cask ATA. Brayburn and Cask ATA are value partners. We are technically the same company, but operate in very different ways and sell very different stock. What we specialize in doing at Brayburn Whiskey is portfolio management. We don't entertain. We, we want to take you in the full journey of buying a cask of whiskey, adding to that cask of whiskey, and also expanding and selling your cask back to the market. So we are very value partners, and we're lucky to say we are the same company which means when you invest at Brayburn, you'll get the best of both worlds of having two market leaders with your back and experience. Uh, we have a, a question here from John. Do you store every single cask at your own warehouse in Speyside? We, we don't stock all of our casks there currently. We have casks all over Scotland and trusted bonded warehouses that we uh, have been using for a number of years. And what we will do is give our clients the choice uh, to actually move their cask to our Viewfield facility in, in Speyside. I recommend for you to do that because it gives you accessibility, it gives you freedom, and it also gives you that kind of tangible aspect of owning a whiskey where you can come and see it. So long story short, we use bonded warehouses across Scotland, sometimes held at distilleries, but all of our casks with our client permission will be moved to our, uh, our very own bonded warehouse. A question here from Keith, what is a minimum investment? We don't like to work off minimum investments at Brayburn. What we like to do more is work off tailored bespoke portfolio selections. Now, we've got cast of whiskey worth more than a million pounds. 
And we know that won't suit every single investor's objectives. Some people have got a budget of £2,000, £5,000, £10,000, so on and so forth. It's our job to match you with a cast that best suits your objectives. What I will tell you is, for new make whiskey, it generally starts at £2,500, ranging all the way up to past the high millions. So there is no minimum investment. It's what we can do for you with your objectives. Question from Jacob. What is the best type of cask to start a portfolio with? It all comes down to what advice we give our clients. Now, as I touched on loosely there, if you're in your early 20s, early 30s, and you've got 20 years of investment potential left, you could build up a diverse portfolio of younger casks. Now, if you've just retired, for example, and you've sitting on a tax-free lump sum of, say, £200,000, you don't want to entertain buying new make whiskey. You want to buy whiskey that's going to make you short-term returns over, say, a five-year period. So we'll go back to that, we'll go back to that portfolio management phase and we match you with a cask that best suits your objectives. Uh, I'm looking at a question from Ron. I'm a foreign investor outside the UK. I need to have a duty rep, but some say I can only have one, but not multi-duty reps under UK law. Is that true? So if you buy a cask, speaking from a business point of view, if you buy a cask of whiskey from us, your cask will be held in our duty rep's name. And what you can do is have multiple casks, if you're independent and you want to do this, you can have casks in different duty rep's names. I don't want to give the full details right now, but at Brayburn Whiskey, what we will do for you is store your cask in our government bonded warehouse under our very own duty rep. If, question from Paul, if you invest in a cask, can you disinvest before the holding period? So at Braeburn Whiskey, we don't like to work off minimum hold, holding periods either. We know that at one point you might need your cash and you want to, you want to exit that investment. So the contract you receive is no obligation and you can technically exit when you like. Now, our advice is stay invested for a minimum of five years. There is literally no point in investing today and selling next year as you will not generate those returns that whiskey offers. So my advice and the company advice across the board is stay invested for a minimum of five years. But of course, if you need to exit, you can. It won't be a massive advantage to yourself. A question from Ed. Is the cask insured by you whilst the bond is where well, the cask is in storage? Yes. So for £65 per annum, we store a client's casks and fully insure that cask to the market value. So in a very, very unlikely event, anything must happen to your cask, it's fully insured for £65 per annum. And that covers storage and insurance. Okay, question from Kieran. What are the tax implications for investing into whiskey? I, I love answering this. With whiskey cask investing, you need to remember your cask is held in a duty-free government bonded warehouse. What this technically means is your cask is exempt from capital gains and also from duty in VAT. The only time a cask of whiskey is ever subject to tax is when it's taken out of that bonded facility and then looking to be bottled. This is why so many IFAs, so many wealth managers and savvy investors are looking towards whiskey to have that tax-free income at the end of the investment period. Okay, guys. I'm just going to take one more question here. Uh, I don't have any more questions here. Okay, thank you very, very much for listening. It's been an absolute pleasure. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to send across the, you will receive from our team, the financial report, the BC20 index, and also receive a very exclusive client offering on what we're actually offering the company right now. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I very much hope to speak to you in the very future. Take care, guys. Stay safe. Bye-bye.